Hello guys, Spartan Beard here. Today we're gonna do a brake job and a brake fluid flush on this vehicle. And in this video, I'm gonna show you all the tools and all the techniques and all the torque specs that you're gonna possibly need to do the brake job on this type of vehicle. Yes, this is not the type of videos that I do. My channel is mostly revolving around gaming, but I'm a weekend warrior. So I do detailing on the side and I do DIYs such as this. It's my first time repairing a car, but as a DIYer, there is no project too hard and I'm happy to present to my vehicle. This is Mercedes-Benz E350, all-wheel drive, they call for Matic, and chassis code is a W212, and let's get to it. The job we're going to accomplish today requires rear front brake pads, also two sensors, because this vehicle gets only one in the front and one in the back on the passenger side. Also, we're going to the brake fluid flush, which I have my uh, handy one person bleeder, WD-40, uh, copper anises, and I got a silicone paste, which we're gonna use during the process to lubricate our brakes. Also, we need the jack. If you have a bigger, beefier jack, more power to you. We're gonna need like a cleaning sponge to clean up the pins inside, torque, which goes from a 10 to 100 uh, foot-pounds, breaker bar, ratchet, 11 millimeter um, wrench, wheel chuck, instructions, very important. We're gonna need a um, hard bristle brush, like a uh, stainless steel. Gonna need a uh, caliper spreader, the tool that helps you put the wheel and take the wheel off, 30 millimeter socket, uh, seven millimeter Allen key, Allen socket, whatever you wanna call it. Deep socket 17 millimeter, like a two or three inch extension if you have, and a screwdriver that you are not too proud of to have in your shop. Also, if you're gonna use this kind of jack over here, I would uh, strongly suggest to use like a piece of wood underneath because uh, as you can tell, it just, you know, it helps to, you know, make it stable. On the floor like this, it's not gonna work too well. And also you're gonna need some gloves. You can use like rubber gloves and these when you're torquing or you know loosen the screw are in like a tight areas and you're not willing to bust your knuckle. Also, last thing, you're gonna need this uh, black um, bag, which is very important. And if your car is dirty as mine, you can always use this to vomit in there and hide it from anybody else. I picked up these tools mostly online and some of them from the dealership. And from the dealership, I paid only $132 over here, as you can see, for the uh, brake fluid and uh, oil and stuff like that. Also, I picked up my rotors with the sensors. That only cost me $153 and some cents to complete this job. Otherwise, this job would be approximately over $1,000. But this altogether is going to cost us less than half of that. So the first thing we're going to need to do is apply the brakes all the way so the car doesn't roll forward. Next thing we're going to put our chuck to the front wheels. Also I forgot to open the hood because we're going to really need it. First thing we're going to locate and open is a brake fluid reservoir, which is here. And before we open this, we want to wipe this area. I mean, my engine bay is really clean, but still got to clean because you don't want any dust, any particles, any salt in this. So I'm cleaning this area. And I'm going to put this rug right around it. So just in case I have any spills or something. You know, it's not gonna get on my parts cause the brake fluid can eat away like a paint, clear coat, you name it. It kills everything. Okay, now it's open. I'm gonna put it just upside down like this. So over here we have a jack and this piece of wood I'm gonna use to stabilize the car cause this thing is not really designed to do on a smooth surface. So first of all, I'm gonna locate where the um, lifting place is for this vehicle. And because this thing goes right in there. After I locate it, I'm going to put my jack right in there. And I'm going to lift the vehicle a little bit, not too much. 
check if the jack is in the right place, which it is. It doesn't move, it's pretty solid. I'm gonna lift the wheel up just a little bit. It's still touching the ground though. Next, we're gonna need other tools. So to remove the wheel, we're gonna need a breaker bar and a 17 millimeter socket, long socket if possible, with the extension. Not really tight on there. This is why I don't like when people put the wheels with the gun. It's not going nowhere. So I just upgrade my gloves a little bit because I don't want to split my knuckle. I don't like that. And I don't think anybody of you guys does. Uh huh. One good. Second one good. Got him. Got him. Now we can use our ratchet to remove at least one bolt completely. Here it is. And we're going to insert our tool over here. So it's easier to remove the wheel and also put it back. Just hand snug it, not too much, you don't need any tools, it has like a knurling on the end, so you can just have put, put like a nice pressure onto it. We're going to just lift the car approximately three inches from the ground. Hopefully my jack doesn't fail. A little bit more. Oh, it doesn't turn because I put the brakes on. Duh! Now, oh, a little bit more. Okay, it's off the ground, I can tell. We're gonna shake the car a little bit and see if it's safe. It's as safe as it can possibly be right now. Now after the car is removed from the ground, you can just take all the lug nuts and a wheel. So since I don't have a lift in the garage, I'm gonna have to do one tire at a time. To remove the tire, which is kind of stuck, as you can tell, I'm gonna have to kick it. There's the snow coming out. And it's out. Lift it right out. So right after you got the tire out, you're gonna need to wheel it over here, put it on its side, and put it right under the vehicle. If something happens, this wheel is going to protect you from getting hurt, possibly, a little bit deeper probably. And it should be good. So just in case this thing fails, there is something car is going to fall into and possibly save your limbs and even life. So over here where I placed the cardboard so it's just not wet, it's winter over here in Massachusetts. And the only tools you're going to need possibly for this are the T40 socket. First of all, you're going to remove this clip over here by pressing over here and pulling it towards you and it comes right out. Save this piece, you're going to need it later. Okay, after you remove this spring over here, you're going to need to remove two cups, one from the top and one from the bottom. And I include the picture, how it looks like. Little mistake, instead of 40, Torques, you're going to need a 7 millimeter Allen socket. I almost ripped the bolt in there, which wouldn't be a good thing. So just make sure you have the right tools. Okay. They're not too tight in there. You can get them out pretty easily. But the bottom one over here is pretty tricky. So first of all, I removed the bottom pin. And here it is. And I noticed this is not a, any Torx bit. This is actually 7 mil, which fits pretty nicely. So after I remove the bottom one, I'm going to remove the top and for that you need a screwdriver, like a flat one like this because after you unscrew the bolts all the, or the pins, if you want to call them like that they don't come out all the way, so you need to kind of push the base push like inwards to make it to release I'm going to include the photo of that as well So after you push it in a little bit it comes right out, just like this so right after that, you can just remove the caliper 
with a little bit of wiggling. Don't put too much stress on these cables over here because they might just break. I'm gonna put it right over here. Or you can use like, like a bungee cord, just suspend it from somewhere over here from the shocks, uh, but never let it dangle because when you let it dangle, it, may, it might just damage this brake fluid uh, tube, which is costly to re repair and it's hard to replace yourself. So here we have the uh, rear brake over here. There's like a little to no life on it left, but wearing pretty nicely. Remove the other one, but before you remove the other one, it has the sensor on it. Be careful removing that because you can easily damage the, you know, the internals. After you remove that, you can just pull it down and it just comes right out. See quite a bit of life on it left. So probably the indication of the wear sensor was the for front ones because the rear ones look pretty good to me. Okay, I'm going to put it right over here, make sure it doesn't fall down, nice and safe. So over here I went up and cleaned the bolts, lug bolts over here, you can see before and after. Only tool I use this is like a metal bristle brush and you know, you can just brush the rust off and make it look brand new again or approximately a little bit better than it was. Other, you're going to need to clean these pins over here. They are like, you know, kind of greased up and stuff. There's like a caked up stuff on them. You don't want that to get like an even uh, brake wear. You need to lubricate them every time you replace the brakes. If you have a chance, you know what I mean? There's like a black thing over here that would probably, if it builds up a little bit too much, it might just, you know, squeeze the one side of the caliper more than the other. And you're going to have uneven wear, just like I got over here. But since I'm going to do myself, I'm going to make sure it's fully lubricated. There's a silicone paste on there, so it wears evenly, not like this. Okay, here I have those two pins over here. I move them, I clean them, they're nice and shiny, so I can provide more lubrication uh, after that. Uh, to way to clean them, I use a sponge like this with a WD-40 and kind of like, you know, kind of went and turned them while wrapped like this. And, you know, WD-40 is not good for rubber, so after, after that, I went and wiped it off with like a clean cloth so they're nice and dry and can add like a silicone paste to it to work on them later. After that I went and removed all the rust from the caliper brackets over here. As you can tell they're pretty rusted. You know it's like a, like a, a lot of brake dust as you can tell. You don't want to breathe that. You gotta clean the upper uh, channel over here, front, ch uh, bottom channel, and the same thing from the behind over here. You can see how much uh, brake dust and like uh, salt from a uh, road, all the grime, it's over here. All the nasties on the road are collecting right over here in these points over here. Just get them out as clean as you can. And make sure if you're not changing your rotor, like I, because I'm not changing my rotor, I have a, probably like a quarter of the millimeter over here of the lip, barely can hold it with my uh, fingernail. So I'm not gonna replace it, they're pretty good. They are in pretty good shape. And I'm gonna replace only my brake pads. So if you wanna keep them, try not to damage them, not to scratch them or you know, like a ding them with something. To avoid shakes when you break. So after I scraped every every possible uh, place with the brush, I'm gonna wipe them clean. Get rid of all this dust and salt, just like this, and voila. All right. So the next step, we're gonna grab our caliper over here. Make sure you don't tug on this wire over here, and. Clean as best as you can, like uh, you know, in these areas where the caliper contacts the brake pads, right over here. Make sure it's nice and clean. Oh, it's nasty. It's really nasty. Make sure you're not, um, you know, touching with this this rubber booth over here, because you can just scratch it or you know make a small tear in there. It's not gonna be good. 
Just trust me. I know what I'm talking about. Okay, after this motor blew clean, just wipe it down. Just like this. Wipe the face. And make sure you turn it upside down like this and top all the sand that you just accumulated inside this piston over here. And put it right back. Okay, I got our sensors over here and the rear brakes. You can indicate them by this uh, X on the bottom of the vehicle. Like a uh, back one is X, that means the rear runs. That's how they designate the front and back. So in the box you have two types of brakes. You have ones with the clips like this and ones without. And one of them has this hole over here as you can tell and the other one doesn't. So the next tool you're going to need is this uh, brake spreader. Uh, for every tool I'm, I'm using today I'm going to provide the links in the description below so you can easily order them and uh, you know get them shipped to you. Let's see how this really works. So what we need to do is to get a, like a one of the old breakers, I mean one of the old pads in here just like this. Put this in between like this and kind of turn it to get the piston to open up. Okay, so we're going steady, not too fast. You don't want to make push it too hard. And after this brake is even with the cylinder over here and it becomes like harder to turn, that's when you know it's, yeah, over here, that's it. You're gonna open it, take, take the tool out, take the brake out, just like this. So over here we compress the piston over here all the way down as far as it can possibly go because the older pads are pretty worn down you can see how much life they have left it's not much compared to the brand new ones over here are pretty thick so you're gonna need more space to put them in that's about it okay the first we're gonna use our uh, brake with the uh, with this tab on it take our uh, brand new sensor and put it in this hole right here like a tiny hole that this fits in just put it in and just clips in like that you're gonna hear like audible click so you know it's securely in there you know toggle it kinda and see if it's really in there which it is take your caliper put it right in the hole like that tricky one but it's in there Okay, connect your sensor. Make sure you connect the right way because if you force it and it's the wrong way, you might damage your sensor cable or your connection, which is not a good thing. Usually what I like to do is get this thing, you know, kind of out of the way so it doesn't touch any walls because this might get, you know, hot when you're breaking and, you know, kind of possibly melt these two wires together and you're gonna have faulty signals. I just made it up, but you know, it sounds like a viable idea, right? All right, so now we're gonna to need to use some copper anises. This is nice, like paste like this. Looks very yummy, but don't eat it. I don't suggest that. Take a little bit of it like this. And I will probably use a finger because I don't want to get too much, you know, in these rails over here. Put like a nice smear on the bottom like this. And in the channel right here, top side. Make sure you don't get it like a, any on the rotor if you're not going to change it because it's not going to be well. If you get a little bit of this on the brake pad, you know, brake uh, rotor or something, it might prevent you from... Um, breaking at least partially okay i got it in the front don't forget to loop the back ones as well it's really important it's a part of the brake and you want to be fully lubricated you know nobody likes it dry you know what i mean okay top on nicely lubricated 
I'll put like a generous amount of it, you know, because I like I got like a ton of it right here. And since this brake job is gonna cost me less than a half, hey, I can use a whole bottle. <laughs> Just like this. Nice. Got a little bit of it on the rotor over here, which I'm gonna wipe. Nice and clean. All right. Um. So the next, taking our uh, other brake over here. Oh man, getting over, getting some of it on the brake. All right, since I got some antices on my gloves, I'm gonna change them real quick and I'll be right back. All right, so the reason I changed my gloves is I don't wanna get any antices on the, you know, brake new brakes and uh, possibly have them fail. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is put a little bit of the antices on the tracks over here, like this, and this groove over here, just like that on the both sides. Not too much, so it just gobs up and, you know, gets kind of like forced into the uh, brake. Uh, but, you know, like nice coat of it and put it right over here. It sits there itself nicely. Next step is, I want to put a little bit of uh, anises actually in this spot over here, which going to kind of compress against the... Um, brake and uh, I don't want any any squeaking noises I don't, I don't really like those and possibly in the future it's gonna be easier to remove the brake on the car okay after that you can just push it right on just like this it should go really easy Wipe your disgusting finger Bam. Now, okay, so the next we're going to use silicone paste and we're not going to use our copper anises just because uh, copper anises can possibly eat the rubber boots uh, that are, you know, these things in. But this silicone paste will do a nice job of lubricating and protecting and provide a sliding power that we need. Take a little bit of that. For some people it's a little bit. For me it's a lot, a lot, but you know, use generous amount of it, cover a whole screw like this nicely. Don't get any on the threads over here. It's not going to be good if you do. Alright, so I went and covered these two pins uh, with a silicone paste and I'm going to put them in just for the note, no mechanic you're going to bring this car to. Uh, even dealership, I don't think they're gonna do this. This kind of maintenance, you know, you do it because it's your car, you care about it, and you wanna, you know, have it for a long period of time serving you. So, the little things like this can provide it like a longer life and a nicer experience. Put the top one in, and then the bottom one. Now, I tipped it over and I got some dirt on the pin so I'm not gonna put it in just like that because you know that will possibly damage or scratch the pin and uh, if it doesn't slide in the boot you know easily it might just wear one brake more than the other and if you have a brake sensor type like this you know front one might look good but the you like the one from the back it might be worn out so much that you know you might just get the metal to metal contact which is not ideal in this case that's why it's super easy to just do this when you do your brakes so here I'm putting those screws in those pins in the top one and the bottom one the bottom was not super easy because there is parts in front of it all right, so after you hand tighten those uh, two pins, you know, top one and the bottom one, you know, like hand tighten all the way, you're gonna use your torque wrench and you're gonna tighten to 28 Newton meters. 
just like that. It's not too much. They don't need too much torque. The bottom one always give, gives me trouble. So since I cannot get the um, torque on the bottom one, I'm gonna check how tight the top one is, which is pretty tight actually. And I'm kind of, and I'm kind of trying to replicate the same torque, you know, approximately for the bottom one. I think this would do it. And bam, this slides. The pins are sliding pretty nicely. You can tell. And this would provide us with the best possible braking that this caliper is uh, meant to give. And then most important, don't forget those uh, plastic cups over here. You know, wipe them down nicely, especially the insides. To provide like a protection for those pins so no dust or water gets in between. And they are there lasting forever. Just like this. It's not a hard thing to do. It takes you like two minutes, but well, provides you, you know, some protection for those things, for those pins inside. Just like this. Uh huh. All done. You know, you can give a little bit of love to this item over here too. If that would be summertime, I would probably repaint everything. You know, take everything off and kind of repaint it, make it look brand new. But since it's a winter and it's pretty cold and everything's cold covered with the salt. I'm just gonna put it right back in just the way it was. Okay, so the easiest way to put this back on is to put like a first pin in, pull it back, let it hang just like this and kind of push it back and it gets inserted by itself. And you gotta make sure just, you know, you know, pull it and push it a little bit. Make sure it's like securely in there, holding the caliper in the place just like this ready to go. All right, the reason I did a, a rear passenger side uh, brakes first, because it's the furthest away from the uh, brake fluid reservoir, and to flush it, that's the configuration you need to do. So you need to do the, fur the one which is furthest away from the reservoir, and then the next to it, and the next to it. So as you can tell, the brake fluid reservoir is located over here in this corner, uh, on the other side of the battery, and you can see how much brake fluid you have. And since I push my piston back, I gain a little bit of fluid over here. Um, to do the brake flush, you gotta make sure that it doesn't run below minimum because if you get any air in a tube like inside the vehicle, it's not gonna be any good. The reason we don't want any air or water in this uh, reservoir or any of these lines is because this fluid over here is not uh, too compressible if it makes sense and the water especially the air are highly compressible so if you get any air or water in a, you know braking lines and you push a brake and the air is going to basically compress and you're not going to get any braking uh, braking action out of it and this fluid it's meant to do this it's not too compressible if any so for this procedure we're going to need like a DIY uh, brake bleeder just pretty simple to make. You know, you need a tube like this that fits over the uh, valve. Some uh, brake fluid. 11 millimeter wrench, which is located right here. So first thing you need to do, this thing has like a dust filter on it. I mean, dust cap, which is easily removable like this. Next, you're gonna need to open your brake fluid. Make sure you don't get any dust or dirt in there or spill over you because this if this contacts the paint or anything in this case it might just eat away and you're gonna end up with the rust and you know paint coming off. This is just a, a bottle of a Powerade you can use Gatorade if you're a fan of Gatorade you know and what you want to do is uh, Put a little bit of it on the bottom like this, not too much. If you will, if you want, you can actually suck up a little bit of uh, old brake fluid, 
from the reservoir and put it in this so you don't waste no brand new product. But since I have uh, two, two liters with me, I can bowl today. So what you want to do is uh, make sure this uh, tube rests on the bottom like this. So if you loosen the valve and uh, there is need to actually, there's a pressure that's going to pull um, this fluid back, it's not going to suck on the air. It's going to suck on the fluid. So what you want to do is put this, put this on the ground and make sure this is snugly right on the nipple over here like this and this kind of gotta go like from the top like this there's like a loop so you can get like an air trapped over here if it's any and with this system which is called one man bleeder you can just hook it up like this and go inside the car and press a brake and you'll see the fluid coming from here and getting trapped in the bottle so I forgot to mention before you connect this tube uh, to the um, little valve over here it's nice to have like a box wrench like this which you can put over the you know over the knot like this and then you can connect this right over that so the next thing you're gonna just crack open the valve just like this and I don't see any liquid coming out yet but let, let me push on the brake and we'll see how the fluid comes uh, from the valve into the bottle here you can see like the old fluid is getting forced into this reservoir over here that we got and a new one is flowing from the front of the vehicle. While you do that you gotta make sure this liquid over here doesn't get past the minimum because we don't want to suck any air in. So check on it uh, regularly you know you do like a 10 pumps or whatever come and check the reservoir over here and if there's on a minimum you just add a little bit of fluid onto it. There is no way to truly flush this um, full system. Uh, what, what you're going to need to do is just, you know, work yourself to the minimum, add some more to the maximum, and just do it till you have like all the old fluid out of the vehicle. You can tell it by the color because the old one was actually a little bit darker than the new one. Okay, now since we're on the minimum right here, I'm going to put the rag around it like this make sure I don't spell it and I'm gonna add liquid to it just to bring it to maximum do it slow because you don't want to overfill it because if you get like any splashes you know it's not good okay so here I'm at the maximum over here I'm gonna probably leave this rug over here just in case it burps back and I'm gonna keep on pressing over here in this reservoir you can tell that the color got a little bit darker even though I put a brand new fluid on the bottom of it and it still gets like a darker color. Okay, so over here how you bleed them, kind of put your foot on the brake and you push it slowly all the way till it bottoms out, just like that. Release it and go on it again. You don't want to mash on it, you know what I mean, like this. Kind of like a like smooth, nice motion like this. Because if the reservoir uh, burps you know like brings some air into the mix it's not very beneficial for us it's a long tedious job but hey if you want to pay somebody else to do it go ahead I'll probably save that 200 bucks so besides paying attention to your reservoir in the front under the hood and these holes to not to get any air back into the system you also got to pay attention to this I was this close of over spilling this liquid over here and that would be just a mess which I don't want to clean so after you um, use three quarters of the bottle you can go ahead and uh, close your valve over here don't strip your bolt make sure this bolt is on it um, the ratchet is on it like nicely so it doesn't strip it and tighten it you know snug and after that you can just pinch a hole so after that you can just pinch a hose like this at the end and kind of release them so you don't get any spillage and that's what I'm gonna do and just like that we got a dirty fluid over here you can tell how dark and nasty it is I mean it could be worse you know what I mean I'm doing this on the time so should be good some people get like a brown liquid out of there 
if they don't change it on time. So when this thing get full, you kind of want to uh, dump a uh, three quarters of it, leave like a little bit on the bottom like this, so you don't have any uh, air going back into the tube. So after you've done that, um, after you close the valve over here, you kind of want like a see if there's any like fluid coming out of there. If it is, you know, you can tighten the, the screw tightly on there. But you know, after like a couple minutes, if you don't get like a, you know, considerable amount of fluid on the ground, or you know, you touch your finger after drying a couple times, you know, it's dry, then you know you have a good job done. If so, you can go ahead and remove your wrench. Don't forget to put this um, protection thing on it, so you don't get you know any water or any salt, any sand inside the tube. I mean inside the uh, bleeder valve, because that would be not good. Also, don't lose this. We put it on just like this. Make sure it's secure. It's on there, and the brake fluid job uh, and the reservoir is done for this wheel. For the other ones, you're gonna need to just do like a few pumps. I would consider like a maybe five to six because the line is not too long. Cause, because this one is the furthest away from the reservoir, needs the most pumping. So now I know the uh, holes inside of it's all brand new fluid. This thing is all set. So after all that was done, uh, if you have a brake cleaner, you can just spray this area, you know, kind of get the caliper clean. But avoid spraying these areas where you just put like an uh, anti-seize or like any kind of lubricant to avoid like, you know, washing it off because you just put the product on there to last, not to just wash off after you're done. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to wipe this area real quick. Make sure it's nice and dry. There's no any uh, lubrication on there. And I'm also going to put a little bit of uh, anti-seize in these areas to avoid um, the tire sticking to it like it was before I had to kick it. If you have uh, lubrication on there, like anisees or something like that, you know, that would prevent from rusting as such. And the wheel, next time if you remove it, it's going to come out much easier. So over here, I'm going to go ahead and clean this area real quick. Get all this rust out of there. You know, car plus, plus rust equals disaster. So you want to kind of avoid disaster by doing this. It's not too hard, it takes you a couple seconds. Just make sure you don't breathe that dust in, in your lungs. So after we clean the area, uh, now it's free of rust and it's looking nice and brand new again. Well, almost. You take some of this good stuff right on your finger. And you want to rub it like in this, on this bore like this. You know, liberate the amount. Try to don't get any in, uh, in the holes over here. If you do, it's not a biggie. Some people put this on the lock bolts or lug nuts, you know what I mean? But, you know, uh, I don't do that. Because uh, when you ask a recommendation from a dealer, you know what I mean? The, the person that sells the car, the person that uh, maintains the car, they don't recommend it. And if they don't recommend it, that means they did some research. And if they did the research, you just follow what they say and you're always going to be in a good. So after you covered all the mating surfaces with this uh, anisees, you can put your pin right back over here. Get your tire from underneath of the vehicle. When, the, when it's hard to take the um, tire from underneath of the vehicle, check your jack. Make sure it's uh, in a safe spot because it might have that kind of like a fold down. And if not, just jack it up a little bit more and uh, you can get your tire out. This will be a great time to clean the tire, but nonetheless, you can inspect it from like a sharp object such as like a sharp rocks or uh, nails and kind of inspect the thread. You can tell there's actually a little bit thread over here left and over here there is no such uh, groove over here. So that means, um, this thing can be rotated, it can go on the front or just get a brand new ones. But, you know, right now I'm just going to put them back and I'm going to do this probably in, in the summer. So the way to put it back is bring it back just like this and make sure you aim the um, pin to come out of one of these holes just like this. And after you've done that, 
and kind of press it in just like that and get your bolts put them in a the socket lift it up and start a torque one like this so it just holds itself on there while we get the other bolts got them here Always start them by, uh, by hand because if you use a gun, you know, if it goes cross threaded, it's not going to be good. And when you do this kind of job, you want to like everything to go as smooth as possible to save you time and potentially expensive repairs. So after a while, you're going to be able to just remove this because uh, other bolts are just holding nothing in place and put this bolt in here as well after it's been started for like a couple of turns you can take your ratchet and kind of, and kind of help yourself like this and get them like snug just like that Trying to put them like snug like this. Don't really tighten them too much. We got a torque for that. So after you put all the uh, lock bolts in there, and they're nice and uh, kind of tight, like hand tight, what you want to do is bring your car down a little bit, just enough so the tire touches the ground and doesn't spin freely and when you have a little bit of pressure on that get your torque wrench and the torque for this is 130 newton meters so after you set your torque wrench to a spec which is 130 newton meters you can start torquing it this one and what you want to do is uh, do like a star pattern. So if I started with this, next one can be this, and then this, and this, and then that. So what you want to do is kind of like a look for the, uh, the one that's furthest away from it. So in this case, you can use both. But after you use this, you got to use this because this one's already tightened. After that, you can use this and the last one right there. After you've done them all, you kind of want to like a, get yourself in a comfortable spot like this and try to do it by hand. Again, just recheck, make sure they're all nice and snug because this is not going to be take two. So after you do all the tires like this, it's uh, require you to drive a couple hundred miles. Maybe I would recommend like 50 to 100. And then if you have a chance, recheck them again, just in case. All right guys, so I finished the driver size rear tire. I changed the pads, I bleed the brake. And it doesn't need to be bleeded as extensively as the rear passenger one because the line from it is uh, much shorter than to the uh, passenger side. It's located obviously a little bit closer to the reservoir than the other one was. And obviously this is the third tire that I'm doing because I did a rear passenger side and the rear driver's side. And this is a front passenger side which I'm going to do and jump, jump over to uh, driver's side front which is going to be the last because that's which is located closest to the uh, brake fluid reservoir. Let's get to it. So the same concept with the tight bolts. All right guys, I'm out of breath. I got like three of them loose, 
but the other ones are just a bit just, a, just not coming out this is this is so wrong I mean nobody had to do this in their entire life I mean they should know if I get a flat and I have a family with me or anybody in this case even I and I'm somewhere and I get a flat how the hell I'm gonna take this off I mean look at this you're probably gonna laugh there if you do leave me a like because I just made your day I'm sure my girlfriend thinks that way what do you think of that like I'm a I'm not a smallest guy I wait a lot of a sub laughing please um I'm weighing about like 185 pounds which is which is not too light so nonetheless I cannot get this log nut out of there for, for life look at this I put all my weight on it ah. <laughs> got him oh man okay there's one more left Last one guys, let me try this angle, I'm trying to grab something so I don't fall down, if it breaks, ah, got it, if they would tighten to the spec, if they would care about you, they would do it to the spec, you know what I mean, 130 newton meters, I mean, you can call it, uh, dealership and ask them and they'll tell you but you know just using the gun and tightening like this this is not right you know what I mean I mean if that wasn't me that was somebody else like my girlfriend that weighs 120 130 pounds she would never do this in her entire life there is just no way but you know here we are trying to do it by ourselves and we're gonna make sure we do it right so we don't have to do this next time all right so we got them loose and next thing we're gonna do is lift the car off the ground slowly oh, we're in the air so I went ahead and removed uh, three bolts out of there and you gotta leave at least two in there before you put this in just because if your rim is not uh, you know rusted into the hub you know one uh, with the one bolt it might just shift and you know you're gonna have uh, trouble putting this thing in or even taking the last one out because it's gonna basically be suspended on that one last bolt and uh, just for record if if you if they keep just torquing those uh, bolts like that you know which is over the over the spec you know it's a metal I understand it's a metal it's like a, one of the hardest things um, on this planet but over time if you over torque it it just gets it might get stripped first of all and second of all even metal has a, like some kind of elasticity to it and if you keep on doing that it might just stretch the bolt and over time it's gonna become unusable if you know what I mean okay I got all of those out of there and let's see how how bad it rusted on there that's pretty good on there huh this is why we use undies if we don't this is useless you know what I mean if I was some kind of gravel and you know I need a tire change and I need to do this of course that would that the flimsy little thing would slip out of the car and I'll end up with the car on the ground and then obviously there will be so much pressure that thing with this thing will jump off or just damage this over here and now I'm stranded I have a hole in the tire and my car is broken you know what I mean and like so many variables like just use anises you know what I mean you you know where to buy it I'll make sure I include it in the description down below so you can just go ahead and buy it it's not too expensive it's it, that would be one of the best 10 bucks you'll probably spend in your life so just you know listen to me otherwise you're gonna be doing this next time
kick the tire. What this? What about this? This! 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 Oh man, I got it. It took me only one life. Ah, oh, and it's out. Jesus Christ, this was a uh, one of the worst tires. I mean, worst, uh, worst. I don't even know what to call it. It was just the worst of the worst. But it's out. It's in one piece. It's a good thing. So we're not forgetting. We gotta put the tire. Under the car. When the first time I saw something like this happening, I thought to myself, why are people, you know, put like something, something else, or don't put it, you know what I mean? You don't want damage that rib. But at the end of the day, if this thing falls down and it cuts your leg or, you know, you get stuck under it or something like that, you know what I mean? You're kind of harming yourself. Or even if, if you're not under there and it falls down, there is no way to put the jack under it. And plus, you're gonna just mess up your water over here, if only. So, just do that, I guess. It's not an ideal, but this is what we're working with. This is what we have. Okay, we can remove this so it's out of the way. Got it, okay, now. Front brake assembly, it's uh, much different than the back one. I mean, it works with, with the same principles, but it's a little bit different. Yeah, you can get them out with the, with the hands, you know, but I mean, people say like use a screwdriver, you know, you can put it like in between and just kind of pray it like this, and just kind of pull it out. But you know, if you have good gloves like these, you can probably do them by hand. All right, so I just went up and confirmed it. Yeah, it's 13 millimeters. If it's if it's uh, pretty snugly, and those are pretty on there, not too tight, but a little bit tighter than the rear ones. And I'm gonna include the photos of which bolts need to be removed because there's actually uh, multiple bolts over there which are actually doing other things. All right, so I just removed the. Bottom one, and I'm going to do the top one, and it's out. The second bolt right here, and there should be like a pins that actually it holds itself pretty nicely. Now pins inside, just like in the back one, that we need to push back to kind of release it. You got a top one. All right, it's almost there. Play with a little bit more. Okay, got it up. This uh, this one got completely fused onto the uh, rotor. Okay. Oh yeah, it's on there good. But I got it out. It looks like it's some kind of adhesive on there. Maybe that's how it's supposed to be. Well, here it is, got it out. And now the other one's gonna be actually a little bit easier, but before we take it off, we're gonna need this to stay here. And I'm gonna get the tool. So I've got the tool over here, and I'm gonna put it in between the caliper pads with the old pad, like the rear one, in there still. And kind of I'm gonna just twist it slowly, just like they did on the back ones, rear ones, till it completely collapses the piston and when you're doing this just make sure you're not you know pinching or you know squeezing those um, pipes or you know tubes or wires for the sensor because the front one is on this side only just just like a rear one almost there you know, you rather do it kind of slow than fast and break something in a way. Especially when you do it first time just like I do. I mean, for the first time I'm not doing too bad, am I? 
Okay, and I feel a little bit of uh, tightness. I know we are bottomed out. So we can just pull the head like this and release it. But before that, we, there is a sensor over here which needs to be pulled out nice and easy, like that. We can put a caliper right back where it, where it was a second ago. And here it is. Over here you can see uh, the sensor, how it actually goes in there and what happens and how it works. All right, here we have the uh, front brake pad and this is, uh, from the in this is the inside one. So, uh, and it has a sensor on it. So the way the sensor sits in there, there's little like a hole in the pad, which I'm gonna show in a second, right here, which is not all the way through the pad. It's like, you know, like drilled from the top like this. Um, I don't know, like a, almost halfway and the sensor goes in there. And the way the sensor works is uh, when your pad gets worn down to this point, uh, it just, the rotor itself touches the sensor. So when it touches the sensor and the pad at the same time, it kind of um, co uh, closes the circuit. And that's the way you get like a light in there saying that they need to be serviced. Because this thing right here, I'm gonna take it out for you guys and show you guys up close. So what it is over here, I lost the spring, whatever, I'm gonna show you guys on a new one then. You can probably salvage the old ones and use them again, but you know, hey, these are like seven bucks uh, straight from the dealer. So, I mean, you cannot go wrong with that. So what it is over here, you got two wires, you know, two prong connection over here. And one connects to this thing over here, which has like a wire in there. It's like a plastic with the wire inside. You know, when it gets worn down enough, it exposes the wire and makes a contact. And another contact point is right here on the base, which clicks into the, uh, this slot over here, which obviously is made out of metal. Uh, so when you touch the, um, when, when the rotor touches this, and you know, where is, the, where is down first, and then touches that, it closes the circuit, uh, this touching that, you know, and this sends a signal to the computer saying, hey, you need some brake job. And that's how you know you need the brake job. Now, uh, when I was removing this uh, front rotors off, it was kind of hard because there is two things. First, uh, these pins are on the slides like this. See, when I push them back, they kind of want to come back. This is, this is a good thing. This, that, that's how it's supposed to be. If yours aren't doing that, they need to be removed completely and cleaned and uh, you need to like lubricate them with a the silicone. Silicone paste like I showed you guys before and I'm going to show you again. Um, so you kind of want to like pull them back from the back just like this. You know, they, they kind of move back because they are kind of like uh, in a, some kind of holes in the back holding it in place. Now after that, I, I, I pulled them back and tried to remove them. It was still stuck on there. I'm like... Uh, is there a possibly third screw, which I'm not aware of. But uh, obviously there was not, because I did my research pretty good. Uh, the reason it was like that is because when these pads were into these rotors like this, they leave an edge over here if you can actually, try, I'm going to try to make a sound so you can just hear. So there's like an edge on there and also over here. There's like a tiny edge, I mean it's not too much you know, that dramatic that I need to change my rotor, which I think, uh, probably change it like in, I don't know, 20,000 miles or something, maybe possibly when the next time I'm doing a brake job. But right now it's looking okay. I mean, you know, it could be much worse, right? Um, so what happens is, um, you know, the caliper is squeezed and when you're trying to pull this thing back, it just kind of grabs on its edge and doesn't, you know, it's like, you know, tight. It doesn't want to come out. So what you want to do is like a, use a screwdriver and kind of put it in, in between the pad and the rotor and kind of like, a, you know, pry it up or, you know, kind of do like a side motion on the top, on the back. You do a couple times and it just slides out. Yeah, I mean, uh, these are pretty worn down. I can probably have a, I don't, another, I don't know, maybe thousand miles out of them, but I don't want to risk it because, you know, there's lives uh, driven in a vehicle and you want to preserve it. So now, this is our new pad 
And uh, this one, this is the one that we need to put the sensor on. It's a tiny hole over here, just like this. You getting it? Okay. Kind of goes in there and it clips just like this. There's a, you know, like a little click they can hear, you know, you can check it if it's in there securely or not, which is really not. I'm gonna try to like push it a little bit more. It's kind of loose, I don't like that. So what I'm gonna do is, you know, I, I bet you'll be fine, just fine, but I'm gonna take a different one and try with that because uh, left one and the right one, they both have this, uh, you know, tiny hole in there. Oh, this one just fits like a glove, just like it was made to, to do that. Okay, and I can really tell there is actually some kind of texture on this and this is some kind of, uh, probably a dried um, adhesive or something. That's, that's what probably happened with this. So I don't think I'm gonna put any uh, any seeds on this because I think this actually has to do that. So um, now, first of all, uh, we're gonna clean this area, clean the caliper, make sure it's like uh, all the rubber boots and everything in there are in a good condition. You gotta you know kind of see if these work, if they even do, and you know you kind of wanna recheck them anyways. You can take them out, you know, relublicate. Re <laughs> re Relublicate them. Don't forget to relublicate them. It's a, it's a very important thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what I meant to say is just relub. I cannot say it for life of me. You guys know what I'm talking about. You just keep it that way. It's it's late in the night. It's like probably 10:15 right now, and I'm here doing this for my first time. And yeah, I'm gonna say one word that it doesn't sound like it's supposed to be. Mescuzi. All right, uh, so I went ahead and uh, cleaned the pins over here. These are actually pins that are coming out from the other side. I'm gonna uh, make sure I'm gonna include the photo of that. So you guys can see it up close. And uh, these are um, guiding pins. So what happens is this thing, this, uh, this cutout over here, grabs onto that and kind of rides it. So um, they need to be cleaned to uh, work properly. So you can clean the top one, the bottom one, you know what I mean? Like as, as, as much as you can, if you have time, you can actually take a whole bracket off and kind of, you know, scrape them off, bead blast them and paint them possibly, make it nice color, fresh, brand new and put them back on and you'll be balling. And if you do that, just make sure you do the back ones too, because uh, there is a, another brake that's on the back and it's not less important than the front one. Well, after that, you can clean the bore over here. I mean, uh, this rust off of it. Yep, it was rusted on there pretty nicely. I'll make sure it doesn't happen next time. And then one more thing, if, if you're missing this um, dust filter, uh, dust cap, uh, make sure you buy it and replace it. It doesn't cost that much. You can get them on eBay on Amazon probably and uh, You can just drive to a dealership and grab it Just put it on because you know, you don't want any like a moisture and anything getting inside But if you have it make sure it's on there nice and tight, you know what I mean? There is no rust in between, you know, sits on it right if it writes if, if, it, if it looks right it, There's a chance it's 99% right, you know what I mean? Okay, I think it's as clean as it can possibly be. Next thing, I'm gonna clean my uh, caliper from inside. All the mating surfaces. Man, this thing is as dirty as it possibly can be. You don't wanna breed this. All right, so after you uh, brush it off, just, you know, use a rag, something, just get all the like, loose debris out of there. So it's nice and clean. You know, you can clean this area too, you know, just to get all the um, loose brake dust out of there. You know what I mean? Because I want to put like a anisees on that and I don't want it to have like any foreign objects in there. Okay, it's nice and clean over here. Make sure the rag you're using doesn't have any um, penetrating oil or WD-40 on it. 
So we're gonna take our pad, the one with the clip obviously, and make sure it's nice and clean. Doesn't have any uh, lubricants on there. Put it in, you know, feed the wire in there just like this and kind of align it with the thing, with the piston and push it in. And that will hopefully get set where it needs to go. Just like this. All right, she's in there. Um, don't forget to connect your um, sensor in here, just like this. Go till it like kind of clicks into place. It looks good. Make sure it's secure. Um, as usually, I get this wire, you know, out of the way so it doesn't touch anything. It's kind of like tucked back. Doesn't touch anything. Just like this. Looking good so far. Now. Um, we're gonna take our uh, front cal uh, front pad. I don't want to call. I don't know why I want to call these calipers, but I still do sometimes. Um, now it has this um, blue um, liner on it. You need to remove it. So what it does, I'm thinking, it protects this adhesive from melting. It's kind of actually tacky. If I touch, you can see actually, and you can hear that it actually sticks to the finger. So I'm guessing this actually warms up and gets stuck to the rotor. So I'm not gonna actually put any uh, lubricant on this. Maybe uh, they know what they're doing in their manufacturing, but there is actually a point that I need to put a lubrication, which is these areas right here. They don't have any like uh, glue and adhesives on them. Obviously because they ride on that guide pin like that, well, maybe backwards, uh, but you know, you get the idea. So, put it in here like this, you know, coat it inside like that. Put it um, on this spoke over here too. Just like this, make sure you don't get it on the rotor. If you do, swipe it off. You can use like a um, alcohol, you can use like a um, brake clean. You can use a locker thinner, anything in this case. Yeah, make sure you loop the back ones as well. Just like that. This one as well. Very nice. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a little bit more. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it a little bit on a, like this side over here when this thing touches the caliper. Just not too much, you know what I mean? Just a one thin layer, just in case. I want to be there. Can kind of get rid of the initial breaking period like uh, sounds too. That would be nice. Okay. Yeah, whatever you do to the front one, don't forget to repeat it to a back one because eventually they work together, not against each other. Now, I guess it's the time they will actually meet each other. Okay, this is it. Now we're going to have to put it back in and uh, hope it's going to work. All right, so after we got the pad right in there, you want to carefully turn it back like this with kind of holding this... Uh, pad in place which is in the front because it does it's not the touch with nothing make sure all these pot, uh, holes and everything is like kind of coming coming in straight it's not like a, any kinks in there anything because it's easy to just uh, twist it out of the way and have it wrong okay now kind of problem is to get these on these brakes now I can kind of probably oh I'm telling you and I'm forgetting as I do. So what happens over here, you need to pull those two pins back and they go in just like that. By the idea, okay, there you go. This is it. They kind of, you know, click back into like a special slots and they kind of hold the caliper in place, which is a good thing. And a super important thing over here. So when you get in these, um, 
brake pads from the dealer or its OEM part, they include brand new uh, bolts in there. If if uh, you get like different pads or whatever, like aftermarket or whatever, you're gonna end up using uh, old bolts. And if you do, as you can tell, they use a blue removable Loctite on their thread locker. Um, and you're gonna need to actually put some back on there, just in case you're gonna need to use the old ones. But if you have a new ones, you are all set, oh man. So you gotta put them back in where they belong. If you can find a hole, just like that. And you are off the races. Starting with the hand, make sure they're not cross-threaded. Just like that. Rotch them down, which are 13 mil. Alright, so after you got this done over here, and these are like hand tightened in the back, you can put the spring right on there. And the easiest way I can possibly think of is just you gotta set it like that, and you gotta use both hands, you know, and kind of pull it back till that thing sets in a hole like this. And you can kind of hit, hit these legs back like this until it fully like uh, you know gets flush over here with the caliper and you are good to um, torque it. So I just went ahead and put the spring in. When you do that just make sure it's nice and uh, tight you know it doesn't move it doesn't go nowhere. I put the anises on the, uh, on the, on the rotor right here. If you have like a questions about the rotor or the back plate that holds the uh, caliper in place, you know, you can comment me, I can, I will get back to you as soon as I can, which is usually in the same day. But as far as these uh, 13 millimeter bolt, bolts in the back, uh, I kind of like a hand tighten them. And the specification of the torque is uh, 28 Newton meters, just like the back ones. So there is not much difference. It's the same idea. Here I'm going to back off a little bit, put it on a 28, just like this, lock it in place, and we're good to go. Top one good. There it is. For you guys having a um, lift inside of your own garage, I mean, I'm so envy. This could have been like a five minute job over here. Well, I'm doing it like 20, 25 minutes, but still, if you have a nice setup, you can do it in much fa faster times. So now, everything is good. So next thing we need to do is to bleed the brake. So there is a cup over here. I'm gonna include a picture. Uh, it's a little bit different. Uh, you know, hold um, rubber piece that goes on there. Make sure it's nice and dry before you touch it, you know, make sure it doesn't leak. Okay, for this procedure, we're gonna need our um, DIY setup over here and a 11 millimeter uh, box wrench. So first, what we're going to do is I'll put our uh, wrench on the bolt like that, and then connect the hose right onto the nipple right here. Just like this. All right, so after you do that, make sure you have some fluid in this. You know, make sure it's at least, you know, half empty or half full. Depends what kind of person you are. Now, uh, in a second of all, make sure the tube is inside the liquid itself. So after that, you can loose up the, crack open the, the valve over here. Make sure you don't, uh, you know, loosen up too much because you might start losing fluid uh, from, from the other places like the base and I can see actually fluid rising up it's a good sign that means I don't have any bubbles in the system and as always you're gonna push the brake till the flow flows into the power it bottle
go ahead and tighten the valve. Make sure it's nice and tight. Doesn't have to be super tight, just tight enough. Squeeze the or pinch the um, holes over here and pull them out. Okay, after you're done, you just want to kind of dry the um, valve over here and make sure you have like clean and uh, dry hands and kind of touch it. If it's uh, dry, it's good. And also, if you want to get to a next level, you're going to get in the car, press the brake a couple times and come and recheck again. That's what I'm going to do right now. All right, I press it like three, four times. I'm touching it and it's still dry. Now it's a good job. And you can actually, you know, if, if, you, if you are just curious, uh, if you are worried that it's your first time doing this, you can put the bolt on there a little bit tighter. Just don't strip it. If you do, disclaimer, I'm not, uh, I'm not the one who forced you to do that. Okay, it's on there. Put the cap on it just like I did. Get your tools out of the way. And we're good to go. The most important part, get your tire, inspect it real quick. Looking good. I probably can get like another um, 15, 20 thousand miles out of it, I'm thinking. Don't forget this, this can help. went ahead and uh, clean these uh, lock bolts right here so what I'm gonna do right now put them in one by one nicely like this and I'm not using any guns any um, power tools any ratchets nothing I'm just kind of one like a starting by hand so I'm sure they go in the right place because as I said if you cross through them you're gonna have a bad day. This is good. It's good. It's good. And this is good. Now we have a luxury of using a ratchet. Okay, it's good. Good. This thing can be removed. Squeaky, huh? It's out. And as always, start with the fingers like this. When you see it's in there, you have like a few threads started. You can use your ratchet like this. If it doesn't go in, don't force it. Don't try to be like, you know, kind of pressy with it. Because, you know. It's not gonna be well. Now, after you got it in like that and then like kind of like a finger tight or you know wrench tight a little bit, not too too much, you know what I mean? You can bring your car down a little bit. So basically what you wanna do is to uh, rubber touch the ground, not like this. Cause if you spin it like that, it, the wheel gonna start turning, you know what I mean? You don't want that. So bring it down. Okay, I got a I got a contact right there. This is good enough. Set your wrench to 130 newton meters. Get yourself comfortable over here. Got one. Got two. Three. Eight and eleven. Got all eleven lug nuts in there. 
That's how I count, count to five. If you know any different, tell me. Well, so what I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna kinda recheck. Like that one needs a little bit more. Sounds good. 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 Excellent. Now, just as I said, um, get like a 50 miles or I don't know, we can just go out on the, in the parking lot or make a, like a loop around the block, you know, get them like, you know, kind of work into to, to each other and uh, bring it back to a garage or just bring the, you know, torque wrench with you. It's not too much weight or uh, luggage. You can just bring it with you. And after like a few miles or 50 or 100 or whatever, you can check it a couple times, make sure they're on there good. But also, if you do that, you know, the removing of the tire and other parts that belong in this assembly are going to be considerably easier than what you guys saw me doing earlier, which wasn't ideal. Well, nonetheless, I got one more tire over there, which is going to be a nightmare, I bet, um, to do. So, follow along. So, all right, here we are after one video of Chris Fix. And what I learned, this guy is really smart. So what he did, he turned the wheel this way, which makes even the bottom bolt over here to work on it super easy. Like on the other one, I was fighting, you know, you know what I mean? I didn't see what I'm doing, but over here, you can see what I'm doing. I can see what I'm doing and I have uh, so much room over here. I can work however I want. Super easy. Here we are, got a bolt right here. Got a ball right there, as easy as that. So I'm done with the last wheel over here. And what you want to do is kind of um, fill it up to the top, to the max. That's what, I'm, that's what I like to do. Keep my levels at max. Well, to fill this up, it's actually really tricky. First thing you're going to do is you're going to unscrew this. Yeah, I'm, say, I'm hearing you saying that. Well, yeah, nice. I'm right at maximum over here, if you can tell. All right, so this is full. It's it's up to the maximum. I'm gonna close the cap and make sure it's nothing in the cap that can fall in there. Just like this, tighten it, hand tight, not too tight. You don't want to break it. And what I'm gonna do, since I'm not a specialist or a you know certified mechanic especially from bands. Um, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna keep this in my car just in case uh, I have any like, uh, you know, leaks or whatever, you know what I mean? So I can just top it up a little bit till I get to the safe space, uh, safe spot and, uh, you know, call for help or something. But in the meantime, we are done over here. So I'm gonna take this baby for a spin and see if we did a good job or not. All right, here I am after a test drive, and I'm gonna try to um, torque him again, just to make sure they're on their pre, like, you know, to the torque. Well, first of all, you need to put your brakes on. Done, check. Take two. Yep, that's good. Good, good. All right guys, this wraps it up. We replaced all the brakes, brake fluid. We checked all the internals in there, like the rubber boots and uh, pins, whatever you can reach with your eyes or with your hands, inspect it. I mean, you can do probably a better job if it's like nice and clean during the summer, obviously. Uh, I didn't have the luxury today, so uh, I worked with, it with whatever I had. Hopefully this video helps you. If it does, please leave me a thumbs up. That helps me a lot. Grow my channel, get it out there. Also share with, with your friends if you, if you think they can benefit from these tips. And I think that's it for today. So as always, this was me, Spartan Beard, and I see you guys on the other side.